Hey, it is Mel with the Mark and Mel team, EXV Realty, and we have good news and bad news. So, okay, it is now November 9th, 2022, and you know, you're seeing doom and gloom, all kinds of re- uh, different kinds of newscasts out there. We've got the elections going on. It is a crazy, crazy time in the housing market. We have just listed a couple of homes. Of course, they stayed on the market a longer time than usual. Uh, we helped some buyers into a home, had the sellers pay concessions, got the sellers to buy down the interest rates. That made the payment more affordable for the homeowners, the home buyers. So this is actually a great time for home buyers and home sellers that are in the normal market and wanted to move anyway, right? So let's get to the bad news first. And oh goody, a Fed rate hike. So November 2nd, Fed hikes interest rates 75 basis points again. Okay, everybody hears about the interest rate hikes and you know they're going to continue to do this until they get inflation under control. Um, we know everything's so expensive at the grocery stores, everywhere. Gas is expensive. Um, housing is expensive. It was going up like crazy. The people that added to that hyperinflation and hyper appreciation that was abnormal, you're talking about over 20% a year in Arizona for the last two years, totally abnormal. It was a lot of speculators. It was a lot of eye buyers. It was a lot of hedge funds. It was a lot of people getting in the market to make a quick buck. And um, so we have the normal buyer now in the market still because you cannot make a quick buck right now because the Appreciation is not still hyper appreciating. In fact, it has gone down. So let's look at that bad news. So new listings have gone down. Active under contract have gone down. Let's see what's going on here. We have less active listings on the market. People don't know what to do. Home sellers don't know what to do. Home buyers don't know what to do. They don't want to overpay for a property. And sellers, they don't know if if it's really flattening, if they really had to sell, what are they going to buy? Is there enough inventory for the home seller to buy? Now, of course, we still have the home sellers that want to move from a two-story down to a one-story. These are people that are still going to buy. We have people also uh, out of state that want to come into Arizona, whether it's for work or whether it is for warmer weather. We have great weather. We've always had great weather. So the new listings dropped They're up a little bit. There's a little bit of an increase, small but little, um, bit of an increase again. Canceled listings. There was cancellations like crazy, and now um, they're bouncing up and down. We see cancellations for different reasons, whether it was people that were just trying to get something at the high end of the market and they just couldn't sell it for as high as they thought. Expired listings are up. Expired listings are up because of different reasons. The house didn't sell. It was priced too high. Uh, People decided to um, just try and get anything. Or there are those speculators that are trying to get as much as they can. I mean, this is crazy because, you know, these speculators are taking big loss, like the big eye buyers. I think um, Open Door just reported the uh, last quarter of, billion dollar loss. So their losses are going up. So this is not a time for speculators. Those people, homes are staying on the market a little longer, not enough to get cobwebs on them. (laughs) Like I said, if you price the property right, and you can tell for your home sellers, if there's nobody showing that home, there's no agents showing, there's no buyers looking, and there's nobody wanting to see that home, then it's priced too high. And if you're looking at the competition and other active homes out there on the market, that is your best indicator of the price because the competition down the way, if it is the same as your home, your seller's home, if it's a better price, they will go with that home. So it's very important to look at active listings right now. Days of market are up. So not a tremendous, I mean, they've been on the market longer. Look at this, December of 2015, oh, 56 days. I mean, it's 
it's not that bad right now. I think it's 38, it says. Appreciation though. Appreciation of median sales price has gone down. But look what it's doing there. It's kind of it's kind of hovering now because we spiked up up in May was the peak of prices. And then we started going down in prices. And that was when the interest rates went up and immediately demand went down. And it slowed and slowed, Demi buyer demand just slowed and slowed. And so basically from October, we've actually gone to what it was a plus 5.9%, which is, that's more realistic. I mean, we've been getting in the last several years, we've gotten anywhere from 5% to 10% appreciation a year. So that's way more normal. That would be, you know, that's where it would have been if it was a pretty much a normal appreciation without this hyper appreciation from all these speculators getting into the market. This is the good news. Let's get to the good news. So now we see more buyers entering the market because prices are more affordable and they're very much more affordable when home sellers will off will buy down the interest rate on the mortgage and help get that rate down to lower that monthly payment to, I mean, new home builders are doing the same thing. There are some new home builders offering 4%. They'll buy down the rate for the first two years to 4%, some even right under 4%. So home sellers are cooperating more and the agents that are really going to bat for their home buyers are uh, are asking for those concessions from their home sellers. So that is a good, good thing. And when you see that leveling off there and not continuing to fall off a cliff, like some predictions are out in YouTube world, it's not falling off a cliff. Now, we are in slower months, so it could dip more. It could dip more in January because we've we've got more inventory probably gonna come on the market because we get busier from in February, March, April, that's when people want to plan for the next year and their summers and they want to just get that move going. So they go in the spring. Plus, we have a lot more buyers in Arizona and that's what they take advantage of showing more properties to more buyers when they're here enjoying our wonderful weather and uh, all the events that we have, the Phoenix Open, the um we're having a Super Bowl this year, so it's going to be a fun, fun beginning of 2023. And the um, unemployment goes up and down with the recession. However, look at this. This is the Emerging Employment Centers, a lot of them in the West, a lot of them in the West Valley of Arizona, of Phoenix Metro. We have other kinds of uh, industry that is coming to um Phoenix metro area. And you have a, a lot of areas on the west side for manu manufacturing. You have some down here. It's all the pink. Um, you have um, finance and, and insurance up, up the 17 corridor. You have a uh, professional and scientific all over the valley. Um, lots of retail, wholesale, lots of healthcare. So I wanted to get to these these notices here. So this is the business journal, Phoenix Business Journal, showing um, and reporting in October of 2022 that um, Nicola to build a hydrogen hub on nearly a thousand acres in the West Valley in Buckeye, um, which is great because they have a lot of new builds over there. Um, the little sleepy city of surprise is going to have some massive growth. Um, Pinal County city rezoned for uh, proposed medical innovation campus, um, semiconductor supplier doubles down in East Valley with new manufacturing plants. And that whole Eastern tech corridor in East Mesa is exploding. They are building like crazy. So what I'm saying is there's a lot of people that are coming out here for jobs. And this was what happened in the last Great Recession when I was appraising and uh, reviewing appraisals during that time. This is what we had. We were recovered by a lot of jobs coming out here. A lot of people came out here and they started buying those homes that were sitting on the market. So that's what always helps us recover faster. What Arizona market areas show most decline? Those peripheral areas where there's more building, more building and more supply. And those are a lot of new builds, a lot of new builds 
you can get uh, interest rate buy downs and seller concessions from those builders. So there are a great a great deal right now. Um, there are areas that are still stable, and that would be Scottsdale, Perry Valley. Those areas are still not so much a buyer's a buyer's market. But as you go out to the peripheral area of the valley and where there's more supply, you see that there is um, there is a, a higher rate of price declines in those areas. And you can get a really great deal in Queen Creek, Maricopa, Buckeye. Those are the top areas you can get a great deal right now. The bad news is that, yes, we've had a major price go up 8% overall average since you know may but good news is that sellers are helping to buy down interest rates for the buyers if your agent is fighting for you to have that lower interest rate and it's all about lowering that monthly payment and if you're going to buy a home now's a good time to start looking that is a wrap up for this and i hope that you um, follow us like and share and um, email us, text us, phone call us if you have any questions about anything in the market in Arizona. Oh, and if you want to see what your home's worth, go to the link in the comments and check out what your home is, what your home may be worth now. And as always, we'll be here for you with over 30 years of excellence through experience. Mm -hmm.